Hi, this is Stephen Williams, founder and president of the CreditRepairShop.com, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how to get a charge off removed from your credit reports almost overnight. My new strategy, I have put this into place, and it is it is working. Getting charge offs removed from your credit reports, getting the debt forgiven so you don't have to worry about them coming up from behind with another debt collection company or their attorneys trying to sue you. This will get the charge-offs and write-offs uh, off of the reports and get the debt taken off. You notice a lot of people on YouTube, so-called credit repair experts, do not know how to do this. They will be copying my strategy after I tell you how to do it in this video but I've, I'm always trying new things and because of what we're going through with this COVID-19 uh, uh, situation I'm just thinking totally out of the box on how we can help customers uh, because a lot of you are, fi are, are struggling financially or you're unsure about your finances so uh, understanding what happened with the other uh, economic downturns that happened in the past, I think out of the box now when it comes to my customers and I want to help you with this. This is a strategy that we've put into place, uh, just worked for some, some customers and I want to see, uh, I want to share it with you so you can uh, uh, get some help with getting the charge offs and the debt removed. Everybody talks about trying to get charge offs removed. I even saw someone posted a new video saying you shouldn't even worry about the charge offs on your credit reports. Well, let me tell you, when you try to go buy a house or a car or something and they see that you have that unresolved debt, you're going to get declined. You're going to be depressed because you were not responsible enough to take care of things to get what you needed done to get into that house or to get that car, or whatever your goal is that you were trying to accomplish. So now let's get started. For you that don't know, a charge off, a charge off or write off, they'll have this on your credit reports. It'll be in the comment section. This is when it's going to be moved to a different uh, classification for the creditor. They cannot have it on their books if it's a dead account. They cannot keep it on their books as a live account. They have to be honest with investors or be honest with with uh, uh, how they're reporting the financial status of their company. They have to put it into this classification uh, because it would be a lie for them to say that this account is good when it's not good. <clears throat> Credit card companies are required to do this within uh, six months of an account going bad. Uh, auto loan companies, uh, most of them have to do it within three months. This is a law. This is not something that they could just choose to do. This is a law. So now, let's start with step one. The first things that I tell people to do is to, uh, first, let's figure out if it's going to be from the original creditor or is it going to be sold? It's been sold to a debt collector. Now, a debt collector could be coming after you for the money, so you don't know what the relationship is with the original creditor or the debt collector uh, about regarding the debt, the charge off or write off. It could be a charge off or a write off. So, first thing first, we want to see what's the relationship. Was it so? Is it are they hired or contracted by original creditor or is it is the debt collector the new owner of the debt? Are they the new owner of the debt? And are they the new owner or are they 
assigned by another debt collector. So let's review real quick. We want to find the relationship of this charge off with the original creditor and the debt collection company. Are they, did the debt collection company get hired by the original creditor? Did the debt collector buy the debt? Did they buy the debt? Or were they assigned by a debt collector? So now, let me show you how to figure that out. On the debt collection letter, on the debt collection letter, usually in either this corner, the top left, or it'll be right here, you'll see all of the information that you need to know about where that debt came from. Okay, so on that debt collection letter, it can have either the, it'll usually say the debt collector over here, and it'll usually have the original creditor here. Even if they purchase the debt, they'll try to confuse you so you'll think that they were hired by them even though it's not. Also, I want you to watch out for sometimes you'll see a debt collector here, then you'll see another debt collector here. That's because uh, usually a debt collection firm portfolio company will buy all of the debt and then they will ship it out and hire out or contract out with local debt collectors in that area. So they'll buy all of it nationwide and then they'll job it out to local debt collectors in that area. So now what you need to pay attention to also right here, it's usually in the first paragraph or it'll be in the last paragraph. It tells you that you have 30 days to dispute the debt. But let me warn you where a lot of people go wrong with this. They dispute the debt saying that the, the debt is not theirs when what you should actually do is you dispute the debt doing a validation of the debt. But before we even get to the validation of the debt, which will clarify the relationships and all of this stuff that I talked about is that we want to do step one. And I've just added this. I told you that there's something new with what we're doing. I've added this step here. Are you struggling financial hardship? Now you might be saying, well, yeah, but I was, I've been in a financial hardship. That's why I have this collection. I'm going to clarify it. Due to the COVID-19 uh, situation, are you struggling financially? And what I mean, let me even clarify it more. If you were able to express to them different things that are happening to you, either uh, emotionally, medically, financially, dealing with your job, the situation of your job, children, fam, other family members, could you draft a letter that would clearly state and prove that you're having financial hardship due to what's going on right now? If that answer is yes, I want you to just keep that right now. For right now, keep that because what we're going to be using that in a minute. Now, the second thing is we want to always check your credit reports to see when that charge off actually happened. The charge off date, let me get that out of there. The original, so we got the charge off date. Let me get my pen working here. The charge off date. So let's just say the charge off date was 5 11 12 2012. 
That's the original charge off date. It shows that on your credit reports. Don't go off of what they're saying on this sheet. Go off of your credit reports. So now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the statute of limitations. For debt, or I'm sorry, not for debt, for the wooden, it's for contract in your state. It's different for every state. My state in Wisconsin is six years. So if I would have had a charge off on my credit reports and it's past six years where I didn't make a payment I did not let me write that on her I did not make a payment after that date I did not get sued and have a judgment against me very important sometimes people say they have a charge off and that they shouldn't be able to come after them and then they had a judgment against them or they made a payment to a debt collector where it reset the time limit you don't want to do that you don't want to do that without going through this whole entire process that I'm teaching you right now. So if you did if if it if you did not make a payment, you did not get sued and it's past the statute of limitations for contract law, which it would be for the state of Wisconsin, this would be 6 years. You just simply write them a letter stating that according to the laws in your state that the debt they're attempting to collect is past the legal statute of limitations for contract law and that you want them to, to cease all collection activity for that debt or you will report them to do to the proper authorities in your state which would be the department of financial institution or whoever regulates debt collection companies or the banking department that regulates debt collectors and banking is usually the same department you want to put that in the letter and I guarantee it will go away but now most of you are past the uh, what we're talking about here most of you are past that so now let's get into what will happen uh, the next step so the next step is that I want you to do if you fall into this category I want you to write a letter and in that letter what you're going to do is you're going to tell them that you have a hardship and I want you to write out in detail about that hardship and then I want you to tell them that you want them to consider filing a 10 1099C debt cancellation on that debt because of your hardship that you know that you will not be able to pay that debt. Now, don't do this on a small debt. Don't do it on a small debt. Do it on a large debt. If you have large debts, I'm talking about like really, I would say 5000 and up. Don't do it on a small debt because you can negotiate a smaller debt. I'm talking about huge amounts of debt. You could do this with each of the companies that you owe the debt to. Or if you have uh, where it's really tight with income, then yes, you can do it with debts. I would say go to about $3,000 and up. But anything lower than that, you could probably negotiate and have that debt uh, negotiated for a hundred or five hundred dollars if it's something in the the, the one and 
$2,000 range. You better settle it. So what I want you to do is I want you to draft out that hardship letter, and then I want you to call the company or the debt collector, ask them where can you submit that hardship letter so they can know where you're at financially. You're putting it on record. So this, what this does to them is it notifies them that, number one, if they go after you and they even try to suit it, they're not going to get any money. And if it's with the original creditor, this is why uh, I use this strategy. It works the best if it's still with the original creditor. Or if it's with a debt collector, but they're, they've been hired by the original creditor. This works like it almost every time it works. Uh, you, you, when you notify the debt collector, and they're, this is the one where they're hired by the original creditor and the debt collector is just calling on their behalf. When you notify them, they have something in their system that notifies, that tells them what to do if a uh, debtor tells them certain things. So if you notify them of a hardship in their system, they have certain things that, that tells them uh, if a if a debtor calls and they and they have a hardship and they express a hardship they are told to send that back to the original creditor so they can make a decision they 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 also know that the debt collection companies also know a uh for doing a discount on a debt they actually know uh you can call them and the, and the the original creditor has told them right out of the box we will do a 15 to 50 percent discount if they want to do uh, a one-time payment they know right out of the box they also know right out of the box how much how much of a discount they'll give if it's going to be payments they know that automatically but the one that we're focusing on is the hardship they if you express a hardship and it's with the original creditor automatically they are told to send that back to the original creditor a hundred percent they send it back and the original creditor is going to make a determination on if they're going to do a 1099c debt collect debt cancellation what i'm tr telling you to do they don't want you to know about that so what i'm telling you to do when it comes to your charge-offs and your write-offs and the, the higher amounts of debt is to actually force that to happen force it to happen so you use that to force them into potentially putting it into a 1099c debt cancellation this has been working we just did this for a client that is in a repossession that had a repo uh one of their relatives they borrowed the car crashed the car insurance would not cover it gave the car back all crashed up they came after them for nine thousand dollars we did this they put it right into a debt cancellation because we proved a hardship of medical and financial with that client so now so that's what i want you to do and now uh let's move forward if you don't fall into those categories i've made videos on this but i'm gonna briefly go through what the next step is the next step if you do not qualify for this or if they do not uh, uh, do the debt cancellation, they say, no, we're not going to do it. We're going to come after you. The next thing that you need to do is you need to do a debt validation. And on that debt validation, what you want is original contract with the creditor. And what you're going to be looking at on that original contract is you want to see if they had any credit insurance credit insurance will actually pay off a credit card or it'll pay payments 
to a repoed car. This stuff is like hidden in the contracts, but it's in there. You want to look and see if it's in there. The next thing that you want to do is you want to, when you do that debt validation, you want to find out 100% the relationship between the debt collection company and the original creditor. This is where you will find that it's been purchased. So you want to make sure that you know that relationship. Uh, was it uh, purchased by a debt collector or they are hired by another collector or still with original creditor? And then the next thing that you want to do is you want to get all of your payment history payment history charges with your signature or digital signature proving that those charges are yours you want to see all of the, the uh, balance history proving that the payments were put towards the way that they should have been you want the interest rate disclosures you want the payoff disclosures banking laws back in 2008 required that all creditors must disclose the interest rates and the payoff to let you know when it would be paid off it is required so you want them to give you all of that information and then you review it you review it and then from there you determine if you want to settle the charge off and you start the negotiation process Sometimes when you ask for all of this stuff here and they don't give it to you, they will send you a letter saying that they're going to cease all collection activities because they're required by law to get all of this information to even prove that the debt is yours. But what most people do is they don't uh, make them do, they don't make them prove it. They just e either get sued, go to court, and they don't ask for it. They have to give you that. And when you do this and they do get some or all of this information to you, it puts you into a better position to negotiate because they don't want to go through all of that stuff on a debt. Trust me, they, they just don't. You are just a number to them and they don't want to go through all of that. So it'll put you in a favorable position to, to do a negotiation on the charge off. Now, the next thing is when you negotiate that, and you have an agreement, uh, you need to get it in writing and you need to negotiate to have the item removed, the negative item removed off reports. This is where a lot of people go wrong on there too. For some reason, a lot of people don't think that you can get a negative item removed off a report when you've negotiated it with them. You have to do it up front. Even if they don't want to do it, you can do it on the back side, but you need to always push to do it up front. They will do it. They want the money. They will do it. So now... I've walked you through step by step what I want you to do if you have a charge off you need if you have them don't sit on this information put it to work you'll see that you'll get results and uh, this this is exactly what we do for clients in our office and this is what you can do for yourself so uh, I'm gonna be ending the video here what I want you to do 
is uh, please like the video, please share this video. This is good information on how to get charge offs off of your credit reports, and it'll be like overnight when it's gone and done. Especially if you don't have the debt anymore, and they do the the uh, they do the uh, 1099C debt cancellation. Uh, so if you need help with your credit, please uh, visit thecreditrepairshop.com. If you need your credit reports and scores, please visit your the number three scores dot com. Please like the video. Please share. Please post your comments. And also, please tell me what happens when you use this strategy to get uh, charge offs and write offs off of your credit reports. Thanks a lot. This is Stephen Williams founder and president of the creditrepairshop.com. Thank you and have a great day.